Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In our previous video, we started to delve into connecting to the HANA database and performing database queries using pure Node.js and learned a little bit about uh, the asynchronous nature of Node.js and how we have to embed event handlers, callbacks, uh, to uh, even in a single database query just between the connection the preparation and executing the query, we have these embedded callbacks. But let's look at some other options of in within Node.js that might provide us with, uh, with a better developer experience and easier to read code, but still uh, has the power of the asynchronous nature of Node.js. And I want to stress that we're going to look at, we're basically going to take the, the example from the, from the previous video and we're going to we're going to rewrite it a couple of different ways. The runtime isn't going to be impacted. The, the results, um, when we run the query, they're all going to be the same. This is mainly about uh, semantic sugar, the, the, the syntax that the developer sees, but of course that impacts the readability and maintainability of the code as well. So let's go back to our example here. And we'll return to our ex2.js where we've been uh, coding two event handlers, one which used the low-level HANA client and one that used the HDB EXT. And the rest of these queries, uh, we're all going to use the HDB EXT. And almost always uh, when we code against the HANA database in Node.js, we we'll choose to use HDB EXT over the HANA client. Um, so that isn't going to be any different but what we're going to look at is different uh, aspects of node.js that might allow us to write our code in a little bit more clean manner so um, we want to add another event handler here and uh, we're going to get this from we'll get the source code here and then we'll talk about it so what i want to do in this block of code is uh, I want to use a third-party open source module called async. All right, it's a little bit older, and this was uh, commonly used in Node.js in, in days past because it allows us to avoid the deeply nested nature of uh, evented callbacks. I should say that's one of many things that the async library makes possible. Um, we'll see in a minute how the JavaScript language itself has evolved and actually offers us some of the same features. But for historical purposes, you still see the async module used a lot, particularly in older code. And it does a, it does a good job of uh, providing a better structure for your code. Because what we see here the major parts of the, the query that we did here uh, in this previous video where we um, prepare the statement and then execute the statement and then get the results back. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in three separate functions. We're going to prepare the statement, we're going to execute the statement, and then we're going to get the response back and process it. Okay, And it's the async library or the async module that's going to control the flow here and basically what we're saying we're going to give it three functions and it's going to execute them and it will take care of the uh, evented callbacks so that when um, uh, when the preparation is done notice what we do is we still have an inline uh, callback event or we still have an inline event um, handler but inside that event handler, instead of embedding the next block of code, we simply call this callback function and, and pass it all of our parameters. This callback function is something that's provided by the async waterfall module. So it's giving our function uh, something to, to call when it's done. And then when it sees that the first function is done, it gets the results and it starts the next function in this array. So it isn't as though our Node.js is controlling the order of execution here. We're bas basically passing multiple functions into async waterfall, and it's responsible for controlling the flow now. 
So when we have dependent things like the preparation, execution, and then processing response, we can write them in a manner that's a little easier to read. Uh, you know, without them embedded inside of each other like we had here, we don't get so much nesting of our code, and the the expected logical flow is is just easier uh, to read, I believe. Uh, now, what you do end up with is because you've got the function headers uh, for each of these, and you do have to have um, uh, the callback statement. So you still do have an inlined event handler, simply calls the, the callback. Um, it is a little more coding. You know, here it, we've just got, you know, a few more lines of code. So it does turn out to be a little bit more verbose, but the trade-off is that uh, it is certainly easier to read. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just run this real quick and then we can test our new event handler. So we just would go to forward slash waterfall and it produces the same results. I'm basically just coming over here to test. I would expect that every one of these examples is going to produce the, the same results. Um, now for the next adjustment, we want to switch away from using third-party modules and use something that is part of Node.js itself. Uh, a decently recent addition to Node.js, back with um, Node.js version 6, is the introduction of Promises. And what Promises tries to do is just simplify this, um, this whole inline eventing and, uh, and usage of callbacks and instead we return a promise that can be checked. Now what we want to do is actually uh, we want to create a little utility that helps us utilize promises because uh, the, the issue here is that any API or module that's going to be used with promises has to return a promise. And unfortunately the HDB EXT and the low, lo low level HANA client they don't return promises. So what we want to do is we just want to create a little wrapper around our wrapper module. And we want to build a wrapper around HDB EXT that will um, just take all the, all the main functions of HDB EXT and, and uh, uh, call them and return promises so that we can use the, the promises syntax. So in order to do that, we're going to create a, a little reusable library, and we're going to use this throughout many subsequent videos, because as you're going to see here, once we start using promises, the syntax gets even more compact and, and easier to read, so it's a, a really nice addition. Uh, so I'm going to put this in a reusable folder called utils, and uh, the file will be named uh, db promises.js and this is a very generic little block of code we're going we're to use this all over the place uh, that's that's part of the reason why I broke it out into its uh, it, uh, this this utility folder this is not part of any one route or, or part of our application so let me grab all this code and then we'll walk through what it does so basically what you see here is we're also using some, some object-oriented JavaScript as well. I'm actually creating a, a class. And I'm going to take each of the major functions of the um, HDB EXT module and uh, I'm going to expose them as, uh, as methods in this class. Um, I, do have a, I, I do have a constructor here where we can initialize a connection um, to the... Uh, uh, to the client and and one thing that you see here is there's actually a built-in utility uh, that will promisefy an existing function or, or, or API in Node.js and that's what I'm able to do a lot of here I'm just able to promisefy the the inner HDB EXT functions uh, but in a couple cases I need to be able to handle um, uh, for instance, some of these more complex examples, like when we start calling stored procedures, I've got multiple inputs and outputs, and I have to be able to loop over and, and handle those. We'll, we'll come back and talk about that more complex scenario with stored procedures later. For now, let's just stick with the uh, uh, preparing the statement, executing the statement, and uh, creating the connection, uh, which we don't have to do in, in our case because Express is going to take care of that for us. But now that I have this, uh, this promises wrapper, 
we can uh, use database promises and let's rewrite this um, both of these so we won't use the inline callbacks and we won't use the third party async module either uh, let's use the promise approach and uh, let me get our code snippet here for this one And what we can see here is we're getting more compact, less lines of code. I think it probably has less lines of code than either of the two previous examples, uh, but also much more, uh, uh, much easier to read flow. Because let's let's take a look at this. So first of all, uh, we need to just um, uh, get an instance of our class, our, our database promises class. We pass in our database connection, which we're still getting. Uh, filled by Express and is putting it in the request object. We pass that into the class. This executes the constructor of our class and returns an instance of our um, our database connection that already has all these wrapper promises in it, uh, wrapper functions with the return promises. So now when we call the prepare statement, it's basically the same. We're just calling our little wrapper, but we have the then and catch. So the whole idea of promises, instead of just inlining uh, these callback functions and then checking if there's an error inside of there, we're going to use try catch blocks. And if it was successful, then we go into the then state statement. If it was not successful, then we have our error uh, being processed via a catch event. All right. So it just allows the positive flow, the successful flow of the application to be read more easily. We prepare. If it's successful, then we execute. If the execution is successful, then we get the results. And at any one of these layers, we, uh, we have event handlers that can be caught. So you don't have, like we have up here, our eventing, our, our error catching has to be sort of front and center, and it disrupts the reading flow of the application. This has less disruption. We don't have as many of the curly brackets and things like that for the embedded callback handler, so it's a little easier to read. But we still do have some indentation because we still are embedding things. Our, 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 our successful prepare is then embedded inside of the execute and the results is inside of that. But we're getting better. We're, 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 we're certainly getting better here compared to the original example. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll run it again just to test it real quick. It's good. And let's now call promises. And what we see here, same execution, same execution time basically, um, but syntax is, is different, simpler. All right. Now we're ready to move on to the uh, final approach, and this is the newest of all of them. This is something that was new in Node.js 8, and um, it's the idea, it actually extends the idea of promises, and you still have to have uh, a promise five function for, for this approach to work. But this is something called async uh, await. So it's similar in name to the third party function here, this async module. But this is built into the JavaScript language itself and allows us to, um, to pretty much avoid nested callbacks completely and write our code in a traditional synchronous execution way. But in doing so, we're not giving up the non-blocking asynchronous nature of, of JavaScript. So it's kind of, it's the best of both worlds. We, we get a, a much more simplified programming model, uh, but we aren't changing the way that the code executes. Uh, so what we want, I've got another code snippet here. Let's just go grab it and then we'll talk about it. And what you'll see is this is the smallest amount of code of all the examples that we've seen so far. Uh, what we have to do is around the block itself, we have to add the async keyword. So this is, a, this is not the async module like we had earlier. This is a JavaScript keyword. And we're basically saying all the processing inside this function, so everything in the event handler that 
that we're looking for when, when we do a HTTP GET to await, everything's going to be processed, um, uh, can be processed in this async, uh, using this async uh, uh, approach. And what we see here is we go ahead and have our prepare statement, but now instead of having a then statement and, and a nested callback, we just put the keyword await in front of it, and then we can directly receive the results. Very much like if you're used to ABOP or client, uh, you know, traditional client-side JavaScript, Java programming, uh, it looks like it's synchronous code. And we're not going to go on to the next command until this one is done. In reality, it's still using event handling. It's still using, um, uh, you know, uh, callback events, but that's all being handled behind the scenes for us. Why, why do we as developers have to write that code? Technically, any command that doesn't have uh, this, this weight in front of it, you know, it would, would be processed. Um, you know, it would still do the, the skip ahead and, and not wait, but, but we're telling it to basically wait for the results. So instead of having to put event handlers and callbacks and, and nest stuff, we're, we're just telling it, wait for the results. Much simpler, much easier to read, much more like the traditional programming that most of us are used to. And you see we can do the same thing here when we execute the statement, wait for the results, and we get the results right back here. And then we're able to process the results and, and return it. The other thing that's so nice about this is we can have a single error catch for all the uh, await statements. So unlike the... Uh, the uh, regular promises where we have the then statement and then we have um, we have to have a catch statement here we have to have a catch statement here so each level of the nesting has to have its own error catch in uh, with the async await we have a single catch that will uh, catch any error throw thrown within the try block but it does mean uh, that for proper error handling you do have to surround all of your uh, await statements within a, a try block Okay, so a uh, little different, actually more standard JavaScript syntax than the dot catch approach that the promises originally had. And really, you know, once you're once you're on a release that uh, of XSA that has Node.js uh, version eight, um, there's no reason why you really wouldn't use async await. It, it's the most elegant solution. It's the easiest to read solution. It doesn't necessarily negatively impact your execution time. And just to prove to you, this is good. Uh, let's let's uh, let's test this uh, last example here. So I'll run it. Let's come here and change to our weight, and we get the same results. So um, you know, just once again to recap, I think this is uh, this is probably the approach you want to use whenever possible. The async await. It's the most readable code. And subsequently, from this point forward, in a lot of our uh, videos, we'll, we'll only rely on the, uh, the async await uh, approach in most all cases. I haven't actually gone back and rewritten every line of code. You know, Some of these exercises were developed over a number of years before we had this async await approach. But in most anything that I've touched, I've rewritten, or anything new that I've written, I, I tend to always use async await.